What's up everybody? This is video number two installment of the Honda PA52 upgrade and uh, tuning sort of situation we got going on here. So quickly let me show you what I did. Uh, I was able to uh, very easily take the entire uh, drivetrain and engine motor back wheel everything. Just took it right out of the back of the bike. Um, pretty simple actually. The only wires I had to disconnect were the uh, alternator wires here. And there was one wire going to the uh, the uh, CDI. Um, so pretty simple. Um, just the ground wire probably right here on that prong. Hmm, what else? This was disconnected. I wonder if I did that a long time ago. I, maybe that was supposed to be on there. Um, the gas line I disconnected. Man, that might have been about it. Oh, the brake cable for the back and the throttle cable. I guess that's the other ones I had to uh, disconnect. But as far as electrical, it was pretty simple. Um, I just have it hanging from the uh, from the top here. It really doesn't weigh much. There's not much weight on this back end. Everything's sitting on the wheel in the front. And I got ropes just to hold it from falling over. I could probably set this down on the ground now and it would be okay, but there's nothing to hold it from falling over. So I don't know. Maybe I'll lean it up against something. But now I can just take this entire thing and it's got the kickstand on it. So I can take this entire thing and work on it really nicely now. Um, so it should be good. I'll have to take the uh, carburetor off. Um, I bought new reeds. A new carburetor, which may or may not work correctly. A uh, bigger, bigger opening. Um, the head, the cylinder, uh, the cylinder, not the head, but the cylinder, the jug, if you want to call it that, the uh, piston, piston rings, seals, um, a belt, back brake shoes, and a spark plug. I believe that was my list of parts that I had purchased. Right at 400 bucks, so not too bad. It's free shipping. Um, I can't complain, I guess. So now it's time to uh, pick this sucker up and... Uh, work on it on the bench pretty cool actually <laughs> it literally took me I don't know 15 to 20 minutes to just pop all this apart it's pretty darn simple so uh, I'd say with an easy half an hour and you're off so let's uh, start tearing it down I was gonna do some time-lapse of all this stuff but I just sometimes I just don't have the time because the kids are running around and I'm trying to pay attention to what they're doing and it just wouldn't be very good so we'll just take it a step at a time and see where it heads um, I could not get an air filter. This one looks like it's extremely clogged. I pulled it out and it was pretty bad, so that is a definite issue in the first place. Um, when I get all said and done, I'll see if I can get a different uh, air filter to fit on that muffler or on the uh, um, carburetor, but I'm not sure if I can, so I may have to just either use what I got or do something different. I'm not sure. I will have to take the back end here apart. This has always been dragging. So I'm going to see what's going on inside there, if it's just full of dirt or dust or brake dust or what the deal is. Um, they do have like drum brakes, so there's two disc um, actual brake pads rubbing, r riding on the inside of a drum. And I don't know, I'm sure it's a steel drum, I'm, I'm not for sure, it almost have to be. Or steel line that's been pressed into that aluminum, I'm not sure yet. And if the front ones, uh, um, I don't, I'm not going to do the front ones, but the back ones for sure need it because something's out of round or I don't know. So anyway, let's keep moving on. Alright, so I'm just working on this. And, uh, uh, this thing, there's like stuff falling out of it. See them little particles? There's a chunk. So that can't be real good. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to buy some rollers for the inside of here. So, uh, we'll take it apart and see what it looks like. Oh, well, I took this apart, and uh, this is what it looks like. I'm going to, uh, going to say that that's going to be uh, replaced. Those uh, weights in there are supposed to roll up and down. And that ain't gonna happen like this. So we'll have to do something about that. Ouch. 
Alrighty. I got it all pulled apart. It came apart fairly easy. Look at my nice hair in the sun. There's the, uh, the unibody frame in the back, almost. <laughs> um, this is all welded together, so that's going to be real fun to try to get apart and clean real well. Um, air filter is kind of inside there. Anyway, that'll be fun, but that'll be later. Um, so here's the motor, and I uh, got the rear wheel back there and the back uh, transmission. It does have a, a reducer in it. And uh, so I'm just going to kind of show you quickly what and how the actual variable speed belt driven control on a scooter actually like how it functions it's pretty simple but a lot of people have never really looked into it and uh, it's good to keep note of because uh, you may use it in a project or something I can hardly see what's going on here the sun is really bad um, so hopefully this video turns out so really briefly You've got the belt right here, and it fits between the front pulley and the back pulley like so, okay? Now, the front has this variator, as they call it. This is your roller plate, and your rollers are inside of here, which mine are shot. Don't, uh, don't take note of how bad mine are. I'm going to have to do something different here, but for pure reference. So those are weighted and they're being held kind of in place because it's tight against here. So this fits on this portion like so. Alright and as the RPM picks up this actually pushes towards this way which which in turn what it does is it makes the belt ride up okay so if it's way back here it's down below and if it's way up here it's way high so that changes the ratio okay then the back is pretty simple it's on a spring so if I can pull this the back is on a spring okay so running oil everywhere so what happens is is the RPM of this and the weight of these rollers inside of here the centrifugal force pulls these rollers out towards the outside of this which pushes against this plate which is attached to this so it makes this go in which the belt rises up and when this rises up this has less tension on it than the force that the belt's pulling so it slowly goes the other way so it varies from uh, I guess low high to high low which changes your speed with the same RPM of the motor um, or I guess the RPM is climbing but it changes per how fast the RPM is so it's pretty cool uh, because you can actually buy parts for all this stuff and uh, well actually I can't find this plate I'll have to make something or modify something but you can buy the rollers and different weights and all sorts of stuff to really get the tuning just right for how your engine runs so it's it's kinda cool but just want to show you how that worked because a lot of people don't know so pretty simple uh, the back brakes don't look too bad they look a uh, they look okay. I did get new ones. These look pretty low. I'll probably end up replacing them, especially because I got them. The back hub is a steel ring inside of the aluminum hub. Um, it doesn't look real bad, but I'm going to have to maybe attach it to something and spin it or uh, check it for roundness. Anyway, very simple. Um, a lot of people don't realize as well that this engine actually has reeds on it and literally those little tabs you see in there they actually fold out and those metal bent metal curve pieces hold it from going too far so when the engine's sucking it's actually pulling open those tabs and sucking in fuel and then whenever it stops it's doing this compression stroke um, it actually quits pulling in and the reeds that I purchased have two different stiffnesses so one's for more of a higher RPM and one's for a lower RPM. 
So we'll see how that works out. Uh, carburetor, here's the top side of where those reeds go. And then they actually go into the engine on the top side and pulls all the fuel mixture through the entire inside where the uh, uh, cylinder arm and everything is actually connected to and pulls it through into the cylinder and then back out. It's kind of crazy, but that's how you lubricate this engine. This engine doesn't have any oil in it. That's why you have to mix the oil and gas together. In case you didn't know that, that's the reason it lubricates everything. And then, of course, you burn what goes through the rest of the engine. So, um, so that's it. This is the back flywheel sprocket. But nothing more. I'll let you go with that. And whenever I receive all my parts, I'll do the third installment of this video. So far, so good. One step at a time. Unfortunately, this part really screwed me up because you can't buy this particular aluminum piece. Uh, and the ones that you can buy, you have to modify the plates to get them to fit right, which is not a big deal. It just It's kind of a bummer because there's lots of upgraded parts for this entire bike uh, moped except for this part. Um, so that's kind of a bummer, but... It is what it is. I will find something that works and maybe I'll have to modify it to get it to work. But nonetheless, we'll get it on there. The new ones all have uh, six rollers in them instead of three. Um, if I could rebuild this, uh, the reason I tell you it's probably bad is because you can see how it's worn the edges down. So the rollers aren't going to roll very well if I buy new rollers. So it'd be kind of dumb. You can see right in there where that crack is. There's a bad spot. Anyway, alright, peace out. I'll talk to you guys whenever uh, this project is updated, installment number three. We'll see what happens.